Well, um, it's Sunday, and uh, it's unusual for us to be here. But as I've said many times, this is the reason we're here, Mr. President. Look at this photo. This is the bridge collapse in California. And there's another report coming that says this is going to be far from the last one we have. This is a bridge that carries thousands of people a day from California to Arizona. Mr. President, this can happen in any one of our states. And the fact is, we need to pass a transportation bill. And I am so grateful to my colleague, Senator Inhofe, to all of us on that committee that got this really started. The Environment Public Works Committee, we had a 20 to nothing vote. So we don't have to face this anymore. And after that, we had other committees act, not in as bipartisan a fashion, so it was difficult. And at that point, uh, Leader McConnell and Senator Durbin stepped in with Senator Inhofe and myself, and all we did was try to get to where we are right now, which is a place where we can pass a fair funding bill. Mr. President, I have a list here. It's really interesting, and I'd ask unanimous consent to place it into the record. Without objection. My state counts on the federal government for one half of its transportation funding, highways and transit. Rhode Island counts on the federal government for 100 percent. Alaska, 93 percent. Montana, 87 percent. South Carolina, 79 percent. Hawaii, 79 percent. North Dakota, 78 percent. Wyoming, 73 percent. Connecticut, 71 percent. New Mexico, 70 percent. And it goes down from there, but the vast majority of our states count on the federal government for funding. And what we have done, as both Senators Reed and McConnell have pointed out, is we just keep patching up the Highway Trust Fund. And if I were to go to a bank and say, I want to buy a house, and the banker said, you've got great credit, that's the good news. The bad news is, it's only a five-month mortgage. What would I do, Mr. President? I would walk away sadly. I can't afford to invest in a home if I only have five months of a mortgage. It's the same way with the states. The way the House went about it, and the way some of my colleagues on both sides here want to handle it, is another five-month extension. And our states are stopping. Tuesday, the general contractors told us that in 25 states, they have begun to lay off many, many, many construction workers. In 25 states. Now, we all know at the height of the Great Recession, we had millions of unemployed construction workers. It's been tough to get them back to work. And remember, the businesses that employ them, tough to get them back to work. It's been so hard, and now we're seeing a reversal of all the hard work we did, because we did a two-year transpo bill that was very helpful, this would be the first six-year authorization in decades. And the first three-year funding, I believe it's 10 years. It could be more. We need to do this. I just want to close by saying this. Working across the aisle, it's always difficult. But it's exciting. It's interesting. And the staffs from both sides have shown that they can do it. Last night, I was on the phone with Senator McConnell's staff. I think it was 20 to 12. And I kept saying, if we can't fix this, I have to call the senator. And they said, oh, please don't. Please. Please don't. Well, we worked it out this morning. So I see the senator from Rhode Island, Senator Whitehouse, coming in now. And I just, I told the senator, to the senators, that Rhode Island counts on this Federal Highway Trust Fund for 100 percent of the funding. I also did not mention that Senator Whitehouse is on the Environment and Public Works Committee. He's a very active and productive member. And there's a program in there that is important to all our states, major programs that will finally have a fund, regardless of whether it's in Kentucky or Utah, Rhode Island or California. This is a fair bill. 
a good increase for highways, a good increase for transportation. States want it, cities want it. Yesterday I found out from Senator Inhofe, who did a terrific, by the way, national radio address on this, I thank him for that, that the mayor from Oklahoma and the mayor from New York, a mayor from Oklahoma City and the mayor from New York City wrote a letter saying how desperately they need the certainty. We're on the cusp. I personally support the Exim Bank. I know my colleague Senator McConnell, we do not agree on this. I think that the Exim Bank is important, and I ask unanimous consent to place my full statement into the record on why I think it's important. Without objection. And to sum it up, we've got a lot of small businesses that count on the Exim Bank who finance them so they can export their products. We have so many in our state. So I hope it passes on a bipartisan vote, and I want to thank Leader McConnell. I know this is not something he likes at all, but he made a commitment and he's sticking to it. And lastly, we're going to have a vote to overturn Obamacare. And Senator Hatch and I were discussing before how much we disagree on this point. But I told him I wouldn't hold back. And I just think it doesn't make any sense. We are looking at millions of people, millions of people nationwide who now have health insurance, who cannot be told by their insurer. You have a pre-existing condition like high blood pressure or diabetes, forget it. We have so many families that now have their 24-year-old, 25-year-old, 26-year-old on their insurance. And I have stories, stories that would really make you feel good. Stories from people in my state. One, whose cancer was caught at a very early stage, Mr. President, and as a result of that, she has lived to tell the tale. Because before Obamacare, she couldn't have gotten the tests that she needed to discover this deadly cancer. So I just say rhetorically to my friends on the other side, and they are my friends, I'll tell you, we have really built up some relationships over this bill, which I'm so happy about. Why don't we work together to fix the problems? Why don't we work to, because we know no bill is perfect. The transportation bill is far from perfect. We're going to fix that too. So maybe there's a new day dawning here. We keep saying that. It doesn't seem to happen. But maybe something good is going to come from this bipartisanship, tough as it has been. The transportation bill is far from perfect. I wanted to do so much more on safety. And I want to say Senator Nelson did such a good job. Senator Wyden, I must have talked to him a half a dozen times. He kept putting on pay-fors that were good. They were rejected by the other side. And we could have done so much more, Senator, if we had gone that way. We did what we could do. And just as in the trade battle, where our caucus was very split, our caucus is very split here. But I hope we can find enough courage and interest, and most important, keep this in mind. This is, to me, the poster child of why we have come together. This is America. This doesn't look like America. It's wrong. And we can come together, hopefully vote for Exim and against the repeal of Obamacare, and then move forward with a good cloture vote uh, tomorrow night on our very much compromise, because it is a compromise bill on transportation. Again, my thanks to people on both sides of the aisle, Democrats, Republicans, everybody, for moving this along. And I yield the floor.